For today's quiz, we're going to be talking about a photoresistor. I have it hooked to a meter already, a multimeter. It is this little cadmium sulfide device. It's a passive device, and yet it has remarkable range. I'm going to put my ohm meter on the 2 million scale. Hopefully you can see that. If not, I'll move it around. But when I put this in the light, or near a light source, you'll notice that it goes nearly down to zero ohms. However, if I were to cover it completely, it starts to approach millions of ohms. So it's a wonderful device for a circuit that we're going to build today. And we are going to build it. So if this looks intimidating to you and you're thinking, I haven't really built circuits, you'll be fine. I promise. And your students are going to love it. So this cadmium sulfide photoresistor is going to be put right here. Notice we have light shining on uh, the uh, photoresistor. And with light, we'll say it's about zero ohms. It's not exactly, but you know, it's close enough. And at twilight, right when it's starting to get dark, maybe it's at about 10,000 ohms. We're gonna use some nice easy numbers, but these are pretty uh, close. And we'll say in the dark, this could go all the way to a million. Not quite, but I think you get the point. We have another resistor here. It's a thousand ohm and it's right in front of an LED. We know that because um, we're gonna need that because I'm using a very large battery. I'm going to use a lantern battery. This one happens to be uh, running down a little bit. It's 6.45. I just measured it. And here I'm going to have a very large 100k uh, resistor that is going to limit the amount of current that's constantly going to be draining here. I've got an NPN uh, BJT that is bipolar transistor. And remember these start to activate around 0.6.7 volts. We'll call it uh, 0.645, okay? And here we've got our photo resistor. So our question is, what's gonna happen to the LED if we have this circuit outside and it's in the sun? And then as the sun starts to set and we have twilight, and then finally in the dark. This is what your quiz looks like. It reads, the NPN transistor allows current to flow when the base emitter voltage is 0.645 volts. What can be said about the LED when the photoresistor is in the light, in the dark, and at twilight? I'm reading this upside down on the other side, just so you know. And remember, uh, we are using an NPN transistor. This is a uh, collector in our base and emitter right here. So that's what we're talking about. All right, let your students take a, a guess of what's going to happen here. Maybe they can even figure it out using their values and then have them mark their confidence. Student responses are going to be varied. Some are going to say, look, it's always going to be on. I can see there's a path to the battery and this is always going to be on. Others are going to say, no, 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 no. Um, there's a trick here because he gave us three values, one at uh, in the light, at twilight, and in the dark. Uh, and they're going to say, maybe sometimes it's going to be on, maybe sometimes it's going to be off. They're like, I don't like when he does this. It's usually easier if it's an either or, but now we've got three different values to contend with. So maybe we should try to figure this out. And others will say, no, it'll never go on. Never, never, never. And they'll say transistors uh, need a particular voltage. And this just is never going to allow this transistor to go on. Others will have some other ideas that are somewhat blended with those others, but hopefully they're all going to end up starting to realize probably need to do some calculations. All right, let's provide an explanation to this. I've saved us a little bit of time. I've already drawn the first condition. Let's put the condition where we have light on the photoresistor, and we'll just say it's resistance is zero. Again, it's not going to exactly be zero, but to make our calculation super easy, let's use that. Here I've got my 6.45 volts. I have an ammeter. I want to know how much total current's going through there. We're going to need that anyhow. Plus, I want to show you the technique that most of your students are going to be using uh, to solve this. So I've got 6.45. I need to know how many volts are going to be across this resistor, which is Another way to put this is 100 kilo ohms, and I can do that by taking the voltage total divided by the resistance total. Here I've only got 100,000, so I could say my I, 
total equals my V total divided by my R total, I total equals my voltage, which we'll say is 6.45 volts divided by 100,000 ohms. I think a lot of you can do this in your head, but let's put it on the calculator and we'll put 6.45 divided by 1,000. We skip steps, people will probably not be happy. So we could say 0 0.000, 000 one, two, three, four. And then look at that, six, four, five. Could have almost done that in our heads. So I can bounce this one, two, three, and so our I total is going to end up being 0 0.065 milliamps. All right. The reason why that's important is because we're going to always have this little bit of trickle regardless of if the circuit is on or not. So we're going to end up having, you know, uh, a very, very, very small amount that's being drained by the battery. But that's why we have such a massive resistor. Now, if we wanted to work back and find out how many volts is on there, I could simply take this and I could say, well, and remember I rounded, uh, I could say my voltage across my resistor is going to be whatever the current is um, times my uh, resistance, which is 100,000. And if I take my voltage across that resistor, it would be 0 0.00065 uh, and that's going to be amps times 100,000 ohms. And our voltage across that resistor would be our 6.45 volts. Okay, so in other words, all of our voltage is across this resistor. So I've got 6.45 here, which means I have zero here. And if I don't have about 0.65, we'll say uh, 6.45 or 0.6 to 0.7 volts across my emitter and base, this is not going to allow anything to flow. So in this condition, uh, when the light is on, nothing is going to end up flowing through this outer loop here because the transistor has not allowed current to flow yet. Let me draw the next situation and I'll be right back. I now have this drawn with two resistors, and that's going to allow us to think through this. Now, look, if your students were thinking about two resistors to begin with, they could have gotten this very quickly by simply making the simplest case. Let's say that this top one here is always set at our uh, resistance right here, R equals 100 kilo ohms. Well, once it starts getting dark enough, it's eventually, as it approaches, we'll just say a million. It's not going to get to a million, but it can easily get to 100,000. If this one is also, uh, let's just say, equal to 100 kill ohms, well, now we can instantly see what's going to happen. If I have my voltage of 6.45 volts here, and I'm splitting it between two equal resistors, we know that it's going to be half and half. Let's just call that six volts. I'd have three across here and I'd have three across here. If I had three here and three here, obviously that transistor is going to allow current to flow through. So as it gets dark, it's definitely going to allow uh, current to flow, which I'll show you here. The real question, the hard part, and you can remove this part as a teacher if you don't like it, is the twilight. We're going to have to do the calculation. Let me show you that I've uh, put this circuit together, and we're going to build this in just a minute. But I can uh, use my bulb, I'm sorry, use my battery here, connect it, and hopefully you can see this. When it's getting plenty of light from this room, uh, we can see that the resistance uh, is sufficiently low that uh, nothing is going to end up flowing through the transistor. But as I block it, you can see as it were to simulate darkness, it will get brighter. And actually, this is really sensitive. Okay, so this is a really fun project to build. All right, so that's how it works. The only question now is, what about twilight when it's about 10,000 ohms? Well, that one we're going to have to calculate. So uh, let me take this down to 10,000 ohms. Okay, so we'll make that 10 kilo ohms. 
Well, in this case, we know that we have two resistors in series, and they're going to end up adding to be just one. This is equivalent to just having one big resistor total, which is going to be 110,000 ohms. From there, we can end up getting our total amount of current that's going to end up flowing through here, and then we can put a voltmeter on each side here. I could say, what would be the voltage across here? And then I can say, what is the voltage across here? And remember, we need about 0.645 volts uh, for this circuit to start allowing current to flow on this outside loop. Let's do this very quickly. I know that my total resistance there, I'm just going to do exactly what I did here. My I total is equal to my voltage total divided by my resistance total, and I total equals our 6.45 volts divided by 110,000 ohms. I total is going to be, I'll put that in, 6.45 uh, divided by 1. 110,000, and I can already see that I don't think it's going to light. 0 0.000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is an old calculator, it's hard to read, I think it's 5, um, 8, 6. Good enough. Okay, so now I can end up saying, well, now that I have that, I want to find out how much voltage is across uh, this resistor right here, because remember, I need to get at least 0.645, uh, 65, um, to get this uh, outer circuit to light, and you can see right away what's going to happen. So I'll just say the voltage on this second resistor is equal to the current that's going through this second resistance and the resistance of two, and I can say, well, that's going to be 0 0.0005. Eight, six amps times my 10,000 ohms and the voltage across this second resistor I think we already know what that's going to be times 10,000 oh so close it's 0.58 volts we'll say so at twilight this is not going to illuminate now um, you can adjust this however you'd like. I'm cheap. I don't want to use any extra battery power unless I really need it. But uh, you can get this. Uh, let me put this on here again. And you can end up adjusting it by using your combination of your resistors. Or you can get a, a slightly different value for your photoresistor to uh, be as sensitive as you would like. So um, that is your quiz for today. But if you would like... I'll show you how to actually build this circuit. All right, we're gonna put this circuit together. I have everything laid out just like it would be on the schematic. I made an error before, that's a 3904, not a 3906. 3906 is a PNP, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna bring my breadboard in here and you'll notice that I have everything laid out right on the page here. Whenever you have a transistor, take the flat side, look directly into the legs and you could say that side is E, the middle is B, and the right side is going to be your C. I'm just going to take this transistor, face it towards me, and just plunk it right down into the front here. That'll allow me to uh, start putting the circuit together. I know that I'm going to end up having my LED going into the collector, so I'll simply put that right there, and you'll notice that the short leg is going to go into C. Then I'll take my resistor, which I'm going to need to take off from my battery, and I'll just take this out in the middle uh, somewhere just to spread everything out. I can power that right there. I can also power this other 100,000 ohm, and that's going to go directly to my base. And I'll put those right in the back there. From there, all I need to do is take my photoresistor across my, and I'm going to put a negative in here also um, for my battery. I'll just put that right along the emitter over here. 
and then I can take my photo resistor and just take it in between the uh, base and the emitter like that make sure nothing's touching and then I can simply oops and then I'll power it and once I power it should be working we'll find out in a second and now when I block I can see that my light lights up so it's a really easy circuit to use and it's a lot of fun your students can then end up changing the resistors and seeing how close they can get they can also put uh, voltmeters if they use the right voltmeters on here and uh, really fun circuit to play with our circuits built it works well it's a fun and motivating circuit for your students but one of the applications for this that you might not have noticed this is really a night light if you've ever wondered how street lights know to turn on at night Someone's not out there flicking a switch. We use a cadmium sulfide sensor. And look how easy this component or this circuit is to build. We only need one, two, three, four, probably six, seven components to build this. I highly encourage you to do this with your students and uh, hopefully that'll lead to bigger and better circuits. All right, that's your quick quiz for today.